So welcome back. In the last video we have seen, we have created this list with five elements and then we tried to print this with the help of normal for loop and then with the help of enhanced for loop. Now the problem with these two loops are they are external loops which take some time to print. In Java 8 we have internal iteration in which you can fetch the value using for each method. Now the, so if you run this code, you can see we got the output as 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. But the problem is, we are using something called as this arrow here. Now this arrow is called as lambda expression. So this is your lambda here. Now to, to understand how lambda works, what we'll do is we'll create a new file. So we'll create a new file here. We'll name this file as, let's say, class. We'll say this is lambda demo so we got a file which is lambda demo here in which I, I also need a main method and so in this class what i will do so let me let let's say we have an interface here we have an interface and we'll name this interface as a just to make it simple we have a interface a here and in this interface we have a method which is which is show okay so we got a method which is show here right by default, all the method interface are by default public, so we don't have to mention public there. So we have a method A in which I have, or we have an interface A in which we have a method called as show, right? Now, I, what I want, I want to instantiate this A and I want to print hello. So whenever I call show, I want to print hello. That's it, right? So the way you can in instantiate that A is because you can create a reference of A. That's possible because you can, you can create a reference of interface. But you cannot create object of interface, right? Because we don't have the implementation of show. So what we need, we need a class here, and we'll name this class as maybe uh, x, y, z. So we have this class x, y, z, and this class implements a, right? And then it is our responsibility to to write this show method here, and then in which we'll print, in which we'll print hello, right? That's how you implement an interface. So we have an interface A and then we require a class to implement that interface so that you can define this method show and then we can, we can print, print hello, right? Now we can say obj equal to new A. So we can have a reference of interface and object of a class. That's possible, right? So we have obj equal to new x, y, z and then we can say obj dot show. And if I run this code, you can see we got an output which is hello. Right, so we can we can create any number of interface and then we can define a class which implements that interface and you can define all the abstract methods and then you can just call it. Sounds good, right? But there's a problem here. Now, if you see this XYZ class, so the whole purpose of this class is just to implement A, right? That's it, that's, that's what we're doing. It's, there's no other work for this class and we are using this class only once. So if you have this scenario where you're, where you're using a class only for once, why do you even create that class? What you can do is, we can directly say A, right? So we can say A obj and then we can say obj uh, equal to new A. Now why we cannot create this is because A doesn't have the implementation. What if, if I provide the implementation here itself? You can just give uh, curly brackets after this object creation. That's how you create anonymous object, right? And then we can provide the implementation here itself. And to provide implementation, we have to define a method which is show. And here we'll print hello. So instead of providing the implementation in this class, we can provide the implementation here. So before running this code, let me show you the class file there or the when you compile this code, what, what are the class files you will get. So let me just open that folder for you. You can see that this is the this is the folder we have. So in which you have class A, of course, because we have a class called as A, or we have an interface called as A, so it will also have a class file. We have a demo for it. Uh, that was the earlier file we had. Let's talk about this in file. So we can see we have a lambda demo, and then we have oh, we we, have, we got the implementation of this. Let me just uh, go back to the previous code. We'll just copy this code. Okay. Let me just cut this part and again make it xyz and we'll comment we'll remove the comment so if you if you go with this type of coding and you can if you can see the files here so we can see we have a we have lambda demo and then then we have xyz right so we got three files and if i just comment this again and if i replace this with a 
brackets and then we can just paste that code here so if you have this type of implementation so this block here is called as a class right whenever you have methods inside a block that will be a class so this is a class here now this class is a class inside a lambda demo it is called as inner class now this class doesn't have a name that's why this type of classes are called as anonymous inner class right sounds good so we have a class which is anonymous and whenever you create anonymous in a class you get a class which is lambda demo dollar one since we don't have a name for the class it will say dollar one now what we'll do is uh, let if you just observe this code okay so if you just observe, observe this code we have an interface which has only one method okay and then we are trying to implement this now if I if I show you something in this way if I have a obj on the left side is it quite obvious that there will be new a on the right side so this is obvious thing right what about the method inside a you just have one method which is public void show then why do you even write that because whenever you talk about implementation or a method you need three things the method name the method parameters and the method return type if you have mentioned everything inside the interface why you have to write this thing here so that means this part this part is called this this is called as boilerplate code we don't require this thing it's not compulsory right so we, what we can do is in java 8 it gives you a feature you can remove this code now since you are removing this curly brackets we need to also remove this curly bracket so let me remove this first and then we'll remove this part here and we can simply say this block is the part of this method so this is the method declaration there so if you remember that uh, section so we had let me just write this once again so let 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 keep it there let comment this part and we'll write this code once again so what we can do is we can say obj equal to we don't have to write this thing here from here to here we just have to mention this round brackets so we'll use a round bracket here and we'll mention whatever you, i'm writing here will be a part of this uh, arrow and it will be with the help of curly brackets i will say it is s out and i will print hello right and then we can provide a semicolon here so instead of writing this block of code we can simply write this block this block of code and if i run this i mean mind you this only works in java 8 so we can say we got hello here but just we just have one line right here so yeah this thing is called a lambda expression so we just have one line here so if you have only one line you don't have to write this uh, curly brackets also and we can remove this uh, semicolon and we can write everything in one line so we can just remove this and that's your way of implementing an interface so this is same as this block and this is same as this block right so is it just this syntax difference no if you check this files you can see we don't have any inner class and that's the advantage of lambda expression awesome right and yeah so th that's your method definition and we need to print something now let's say if i if i change this thing let's say i have a parameter here so i'm taking a parameter which is int i and so if you if you define this here so i have to mention int i and then we can print the value of i here provided if you pass a value and the same thing we have to do for the inner class we need to take a parameter again if I'm, i have just commented that part i'm just talking about if let's say if you're working with that way now what about this here also we need to mention it is int i and then we can pass the value of i here just to print it we can also pass the value so we are passing 6 so this 6 goes here and then we are printing the value of 6 so it will print hello 6 and if I run this code we get we got hello 6 right now java 8 provides you one more feature if you see the interface we have we have already mentioned that inside show we have int then why do you even mention this we can just remove this part and we have i right and then we don't have to declare that i also and that's the advantage again with java 8 it removes lots of boiler co codes and if you have only one parameter you, you don't have to even write that round bracket you can simply use i uh, arrow and then hello great so that's how you use lambda expression so this is lambda expression here so whenever you try to implement something you use lambda expression so you are passing a value and then you are trying to print it so this is lambda expression here 
Now let's go back to the demo demo for each method. So if you can see, it's almost same, right? Whatever we have mentioned there, so it is almost same. So for sure, this line here is the implementation of some interface. This is the implementation of interface A. So this line here is the implementation of some interface, right? And that interface is consumer interface. So it is consumer interface. Okay. Now what exactly consumer interface is that we'll see in the next video. So thank you so much for watching and do subscribe for the consumer video.